I'm Justina Dacey, the Natural Resources and Agriculture Extension Agent for UF IFAS Extension in Nassau County. Today I'm going to cover winter livestock grazing options. First off, for those of you who are not familiar with UF IFAS Extension, we are a partnership between local and state government that provide research-based information to improve the lives of all Floridians. There's an extension office in every county of Florida and a diversity of extension agents you can work with, covering everything from 4-H youth to gardening to healthy living and as well as agriculture. To start off, here in North Florida, during the winter months, perennial pasture grasses or our summer annual grains become dormant, therefore reducing the productivity of these pastures. Producers then must invest in hay, agricultural byproducts, commercial feeds to sustain their herds. This can become very costly when you have to sustain animals on supplementary feeds for five to six months of each year. They might have to invest in feedstuffs, develop and maintain storage facilities, induce extra labor to feed animals, as well as the storage and feeding loss of those feedstuffs. Uh, research has shown that 30% or more of hay matter can occur when stored unprotected in open fields. Producers may make ne negligible or no money when production costs are this high. So what are the solution? Winter forages, or also known as cool season forages, can extend the grazing season of a pasture. And there are a wide variety out there. Everything from legumes, such as these crimson clovers, red, white, or arrow leaf clovers, and as well as alfalfa, winter peas, and other forages. So why use a winter forage? As I mentioned, there's a limited grazing time for perennial pasture grasses, because our bahia and our Bermuda, those warm season grasses, go dormant during those cooler temperatures, the shorter days, and the frost that we have during winter. This can make that winter feeding expensive, so your cool season or winter forages will lower the cost and supplemental feeding for the winter. They are also higher in TDN and crude protein than summer perennial grasses. As I mentioned, there's a variety of them, but it's best to know which ones are to use based on your soil and the goals that you have. So before I jump into the different kinds, some recommendations that we have if you're interested in adding cool season forages to your pasture. Uh, it is definitely best to follow the UF IFAS pre-planting forage recommendations. Every year they come out with a cool season forage recommendations. Uh, you can find this at edis.ifas.ufl.edu. Once you've determined what forage variety you'd like to plant, make sure you do book your seed early and schedule fertilizer as well as herbicide applications too, unless you're able to do these yourself. Lastly, the time you plant these forages is of utmost importance. If you put seed out in time, you will increase forage yield, prolong your grazing days, and help shade out that weed competition. And lastly, this lessens the need for that conserved forage. You can see here in the photos the difference in timing. On the top here, we have planted in November 1st, and on the bottom here, we have planted in December 1st. So now I'm going to briefly cover some of our winter forage varieties. First off is rye. Rye is actually a small grain called cereal rye, not to be confused with your very common ryegrass. It has a better cold tolerance than oats and is a better quality forage than oat or wheat. UF now has an early rye called Florida 401 and it will do best in sandy soils. If planted too early in the season, Keep an eye out for various seedling diseases such as helminthian spot that could decrease your stand. Currently at this moment uh, of this taping, recommended varieties are the Florida 401, Renzabruzzi, 
and some late season forage producers such as Bates RS4, Elbon, Maiden, and Maiden 2. Oats. Oats can be planted and grazed earlier than rye. It is very palatable, but susceptible to freeze and crown rust. But Legend 567 and Horizon 720 are crown rust resistant varieties. Horizon 306 and Ram La 99016 are excellent forage types that have winter hardiness and a good grain production. But they are susceptible to the new strain of crown rust that is prevalent statewide. It is important to scout your fields for rust and treat with legal fungicides, particularly if grown for silage or grain. Also, you want to beware of the barley yellow dwarf virus. This is a virus transmitted by aphids and causes a yellowing or reddening of leaves, stunting along with reduced root growth and a reduction in yield. And young plants are typically the most susceptible. Wheat. Wheat is similar to oat in forage yield and palatability, but less susceptible to freeze than oat. It is advised not to plant before October 15th and to plant the Hessian fly resistant varieties only. The nice aspect of wheat is that you can harvest the seed and sell it, making it an insurable crop. Today, recommended varieties are AGS 2024, Grayswell, AGS 2033, AGS 2038, Dynagro, Savoy, Pioneer 26R10, Pioneer 26R41, and Pioneer 26R94. Triticale, or Triticale, is a hybrid of wheat and rye, which makes it an excellent for haylage or silage grazing. It has the disease resistance of rye and the forage quality of wheat. Make sure when you're looking for varieties to use the recommended varieties, and today those are Trical 342, Monarch, and NF201. Ryegrass. There are over 35 varieties of ryegrass to choose from. They are commonly used because of their ability to adapt to a wide range of soil types and they can tolerate close continuous grazing. You can seed alone or mix them with other grains on prepared seed bed or overseed permanent pasture. Be sure though to recognize that the late season varieties could delay your summer perennial grasses. Uh, one of the issues that ryegrass has is that it is susceptible to gray leaf spot, which is a leaf disease, but make sure you purchase those newer varieties because they should reduce that problem because they have a very good resistance. Some of the newer varieties recently released are Andes, Attain, Big Boss, Credence, Diamond Tea, Early Ployed, Flying A, and Frost Proof. Winter peas are excellent for light, sandy, well-drained soils with high clay content. Some of the newer varieties are Maple, Whistler, and Common. Uh, and as you can see here, they are a vining annual. Clovers are a legume and are more digestible and have a greater crude protein than grasses. Research from the UF IFAS North Florida Research and Education Center in Mariana demonstrated that grass legume pastures result in greater livestock performance than grass monocultures. And here we have a variety of clovers that I'm gonna cover, such as Bersim, Ball, Red, Crimson, and White. To start off, white clover is a perennial legume that is adapted to moist soils and moderately tolerant of acidity. Depending on moisture conditions, it can act as an annual, but production can be limited by nematodes and other pests. Some of the recommended varieties out there today are Louisiana S1, Bacoe, Osceola, Regal Ladino, and Regal Grays. Durana is actually well adapted, but had a prostrate growth habit and persists well under grazing, but it does have lower initial forage yields. Red clover can act like a winter and annual under Florida conditions and usually does not reseed itself. It doesn't tolerate poorly drained soils. In North Florida though, it can provide a long season forage production with high yields and works well in blends, but it will need longer periods of rest between grazing. Crimson clover is an annual that is adapted to fertile, well-drained soils it has a short grazing season, but may be grown in combination with ryegrass or a small grain crop. 
Some of the recommended varieties today are Dixie and AU Robin. Ball clover can actually grow on a wide range of soil types, including those poorly drained ones. It is well adapted, but not highly productive in Florida. It is recommended to purchase pre-inoculated seed if you're going to use this variety. Today, the recommended varieties are Common, Grazer Select, Dawn, and Seagrass. Lastly is Bursine Clover, which is well adapted to many soils, including the alkaline and wet ones. It is best grazed at 10 inches and leave about a three to four inch stubble height. Some of the recommended varieties today are Big B and Frosty. Alfalfa. Alfalfa is typically used for haylage, green chopping, or hay. It is not very tolerant to flooding or soils with high water tables. It is also not widely cultivated here in Florida because of the humid conditions which makes it difficult to produce timely hay cuttings. But in the past few years, the cost of producing alfalfa haylage and silage has decreased, making it a cost-effective option, and some new cultivars have been developed for tolerating a certain amount of grazing. But they are not as grazing tolerant as other legume species, such as most clovers. Today, the recommended varieties are Alpha Graze 600RR, which is a Roundup Ready version, and Bulldog 805. Blends. All of these forages I've talked about can actually be blended with each other and some work well with others versus others. So blending can be a win-win when well managed when you're wanting to transition from your summer to your winter forages. They also offer stability in a pasture if one plant fails due to disease, insects, or cold. Here you can just see an example of a blend. So this is pearl millet, ryegrass, and red clover. So which forage is best for my animals based on the livestock that you are raising? Uh, talking about goats versus sheep, the grazing habits of sheep and goats can differ from traditional livestock production, production and they can be incorporated into the grazing systems for cattle and horses. Goats are efficiently used in pasture utilization controlling the brush and the weed. Uh, they are mainly more browsers, but they need a higher quality forage than cattle because they cannot digest cellulose. Sheep are primarily grazers, while goats tend to browse more. The sheep will prefer legumes over grasses, but will graze on both. Before getting started, there's just a few things to consider. Planning before planting is always best. Do your research and select the proper forage species for the time that grazing is needed. This goes for any forage, but do not overgraze or graze the winter forage too early. This will produce a significant yield in production. Most small grains should not be grazed closer than three inches. And if you're going to use uh, legumes, make sure to use a proper inoculant. At this point, if you've made it this far, I'd like, to help, I'd like for you to help us out and answer two questions that'll pop up at the top here. The first one is, did you learn something new from this presentation? And the second question is, will you plan to plant a winter forage next fall? Thank you for taking our survey. Lastly, this is where you can find more information if you want to delve into the world of pasture forages uh, at edis.ifis.ufl.edu backslash topic under slash forages. And of course, you can look up UGA and Alabama forages as well for some great information. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact me at jdacy at ufl.edu. Thank you for listening to this presentation.